Hello, hello. Welcome to oh. Coldest Recovery Podcast. I'm so excited for this. That was the coolest countdown thing ever. Wow. <laughs> I'm like watching it like a movie. I, I love StreamYard. It's so it's so wow. cool. I love it. It's awesome. It's 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 one of those things where you can kind of like make it your own and yeah and, and you know add your own branding and your own fun things as well. That is the voice of your listening on podcast of Kate Benner. I'm so excited to be welcoming you to the podcast. Kate is a mindset coach that helps overcome limiting beliefs and you know I, I literally everything that that we talk about, you know, in terms of our a success in whatever way people want success comes back to mindset. And that has to uncover limiting beliefs, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. That well, interview just channels everything. So it, it really does. So welcome to Confidence Through Cabaret, all things confidence, what we're talking about. If you're watching this on YouTube, then uh, check out the Confidence with Coffee little segment. I'll be talking about some of the kind of key takeaways um, with Kate. And then uh, if you're listening on podcast, then go and check out the YouTube channel because then you can see us on video. Because, um, I mean, sometimes that has to be done, right? Yeah, I know. Well, I have a lot of expressions too. So you, you want to see, you know, you can't really, I mean, maybe you can hear it because I think I'm pretty you know, lively, but I have a lot of facial expressions. <laughs> People are watching on YouTube. <laughs> I mean, podcast is great because you can just do it on the go, right? You can just mm, listen to it yeah. in the car or, yeah. you know, yeah. while you're up for a walk or whatever, you know, so it's, it's, it's such a beautiful way of doing it. And so, so we always try and put everything, you know, anywhere to, to reach sure. people, but I always like to let them know where, where else you can find us. Just like, and subscribe wherever you are. Yeah. So, Kate, tell us about your work and what you do. Yeah. Um, so I work with female entrepreneurs who are needing to come overcome like the hustle culture. Um, I think especially for females, it's really difficult to not want to do everything. And so I really help. Yeah. I really help women who are, you know, they, they have so many different roles in their life and they're trying to figure out how to balance it all. Um, and so a lot of that is around the mindset work of, you know, your inner critic of I'm not good enough. I'm not doing enough. Um, I think we've all had that narrative in our head, uh, especially women who are high achievers and are business owners. Um, you just want to do everything. And so, you know, I, I went through that. Um, I was, I call myself a recovering perfectionist because I was the kid who, would try to do a drawing, even in pencil. And if I messed up, I'd throw it away. Um, and so everything had to be perfect for me. And I really had to, through my own journey, figure out how to let that all go. So that's what I do. And I, and I love it. <laughs> how did you let go? How did you recover oh. from perfectionism? That's, yeah, that's a great question. Um, I think it all started, my dad used to tell me, when I was a kid, you know, Kate, just go with the flow, go with the flow, just let it go. He's very, you know, we're not a religious family, but he always kind of felt like Buddhism was very like, you know, something he identified with and just the idea of like, you know, nature and your, your life, it just kind of flows the way it's supposed to be. And I never understood that. I was like, dad, and I need to control it. I need to, you know, it has to go my way and I'd have a meltdown if it didn't. And I think Finally, when I had kind of a big life altering event, I realized, you know what? You can't really control anything. It's really, you just have to let it go. And what's meant to be is meant to be. I really connected with the, the universe and understanding that there's something out there that guides you and you have a bigger purpose. And if it's not the way that you want it to go, there's a reason. There's a reason for all of these things that are happening. And so that's really kind of where I just had this epiphany of like, I need to just let it go, go with the flow. And ever since then, things have easily just kind of gone the way I needed them to. <laughs> wow. That's such a wonderful lesson to, to be able to come across. How, what, did something happen that made you suddenly yeah. lean in? Yeah, yeah, that's that's a great way to put it leaning in. Um so a little bit about me. I went to um college. I got a um I I went to 
uh, UC Davis for my bachelor's of science. And then I went on to become a teacher, a high school teacher. Um, so I got my credential, I got my master's and I got like the, I, I did what you're supposed to do, right? Find a steady job, find something, you know, I, I honestly, I picked teaching because I knew I was going to be able to get a job. Like we, you know, we're in a teacher shortage and I think honestly around the world, but especially in the U S. And so I knew I'd always have a, a position, a job. And, um, I married my college sweetheart because it was, you know, kind of like what you're supposed to do. Um, And I, for seven years was like, this is it. This is the, this is my life. And I kind of had, I call it my eat, pray, love moment where I woke up like one day and I was like, this is not what I want. This is, I feel like so stagnant, so like not happy. And so I quit my job. I separated from my now ex-husband and I kind of just, my mom calls it like dropping a grenade on my life. And I did and like let go of all control. I had controlled everything up until that point and then I just let it go. And I kind of had to like go through this rebirth kind of situation and realize that it's okay to not do the right thing or the like standard thing. And I love the life that I live now because I just let go and I, I didn't follow the normal. So, and I think women are really feeling like they have to follow the normal. Like they have to do like that sort of like good girl kind of thing. Um, and I, I, that was modeled through my family too. My parents, my dad had the same job for 30 years. My parents are married for 30 years, but is that necessarily the life that they want to live and lead? I don't know. So I kind of took a leap of faith. That's amazing. And I love it and I'm happy. <laughs> yeah. And that's the, that's the point. I mean, that's what your parents would have wanted for you. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. They weren't, they weren't super happy about it. They thought I was making a huge mistake actually when I, when I told them I'm leaving my job, my very stable, I had tenure. So they, I mean, tenure in, in, yeah. in in the U S is basically like you, it's really, really difficult for them to, to fire you. Um, I was department chair. I was a pretty big, you know, part of the community. Um, I had a solid, stable, decent marriage. Was it a happy marriage? Not at all, but it was from the outside looking in looked great. Um, and so when I said, I'm going to leave it all and just figure it out, everyone was kind of like, you're crazy, but I did it. And I'm happy. I'm, I, I just think that you have to follow that gut instinct. That's telling you to just do what you need to do. Like, that's what I teach people is like, you have an intuition that you need to listen to through all the crap. Like, we just pile on all of the societal standards, but you need to listen to your gut instinct. So. You really do. You really do. And I think, you know, a lot of the messages that we're brought up with are from a previous generation, yeah. from how life worked then, from the patriarchy, which is a whole other podcast. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, and what and what we're supposed to do. And I think... Um, the fact that you listened to your own intuition and and you knew that there was more because there's there's merit in sort of feeling like oh everyone thinks that my marriage is really good and my job is really good and and so and so the external world is telling me that this is the right thing but to actually listen mm. and, and follow your instinct mm-hmm. is so and I would say even you know. For a lot of us, our marriages ended because they ended because something happened and right. it wasn't our choice and whatever. But right. for you to be able to choose that, like right. that's big. Yeah. Well, a lot of the a lot of people were like, "What are you doing?" And I had to really fight through that second guessing. Those like, "Am I making the right choice? Am I doing the right thing?" But at the end of the day, I was listening to this like inner voice, this inner like gut instinct that like, this is not my path. You know, if you're feeling stagnant or like, it's not your, what you truly want in life there, you can leave, you can, you can throw a grenade on your life. I think that so many people get stuck in a pattern, especially female women. We feel like we have to do 
what we're supposed to do. And when we don't, or when we, when we leave or we make a, you know, undesired choice, then people think we're crazy. And I, I mean, I feel like I'm the example of like, I, um, I found my, my, I call him my twin flame. I'm remarried. I'm very happily married. I'm, I met him and three weeks later we got married. So it was just like this understanding that like, you can you can find the 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 best life that you want. You don't have to stay in a life that's fine. And um, I'm so much happier for all the decisions I made. In the moment, it was like really scary, but you know that's why you have your support system. You have coaches. You have friends that can support you. And even if they're kind of like, mm, is this the right decision? Well, I think a lot of people will agree that it was for me at least. <laughs> That's wonderful. I think I think a lot of times um, people try and keep us in the decisions that we've made because they're aligned with the decisions they've made. Exactly. Yep. 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 And then they don't want us to leave because that that sort of that sort of throws it up in front of them about are you happy? Right. Yeah. I think yeah. People mirror back what they think is the the right decision, and they. If you if you come and you give them a like a, a a different decision that maybe they wish they had taken, it's really it's challenging to them, and so their initial reaction is you know to to push you aside and tell you that's not the right thing to do because internally they know they wish they had done that, but they didn't. So yeah, usually when you're getting pushback, it's probably because they're they're some form of of jealousy or wishful feeling that they, you know, they wish they had done what you did. And I got that a lot. So. Yeah. Yeah. I can imagine. I, I, I don't think my, my mother passed away in January, but I don't think she ever really forgave me for my divorce mm -hmm. um, from my first marriage. And, and, and yet she would have said that's the right thing to do, but because she stayed in hers under those cir circumstances, she, it, it really put it up into her face about, you know, the choices that she'd made. And I, I think, you know, everybody has to make the choices that are right for them. Yeah. I think also if, if, if anyone's listening to this and, you know, things have happened to you, you know, other people, maybe someone in your marriage or, or someone in your life has made a decision that you didn't choose, but it's, mm. it's affected you. And now you're finding that your marriage is over or whatever it is. There's, there's life after that too. Mm -hmm. There is. Yeah. And I like to think of things as it's, it's, it's not happening to you. It's happening for you. Like when I made that mindset shift, because the, yeah, like I, in a way I did control the narrative by leaving. Um, but there were a lot of things after that, that happened for me, I guess, you know, it, you have to make that one little tiny word shift and you feel so much more like you feel in control and powerful when you think of it in that way. Like why, why is this happening? What's the lesson? What do I need to do in order to learn from this? And so if it's happening for you, you know, there's a reason. And, you know, there's times now where with my, my, my business, I don't get, I don't have clients that, you know, I, I, I go on sales calls, it doesn't work out and I'm bummed. And then I think that, well, what's, why is this happening for me? There's a direction it's pushing you in and there, you know, everyone, everyone can live their happiest, best life. I mean, I really truly believe that. And, and so when things happen, it, there's a re there. I really believe there's a reason. There is, there is, and at, at the very least, you can trust. You know, even if that's not your way of thinking about things, you can trust that you'll learn something from it. Yeah, even if it's really painful. And I know, you know, there's probably people who they they went through maybe a divorce or a breakup, or you know, they lost their job or whatever the situation is in the moment, it's really painful and you can't necessarily see the, the lesson or the guidance in that moment, but time will be able to, to show you that. And to finding a support system. I mean, I think nobody can do life alone. Um, even if it's one person or, you know, you find a coach, like I've had many amazing coaches, but also community there's a lot of people out there who are probably going through the same thing you're going through. And it's fine. Like, I, I mean, you know, you and I met 
just randomly on Facebook and just started talking. And so that's how I've forged so many incredible relationships. And I encourage people to reach out and find community when they're going through something because it's amazing. There's probably a lot more people going through what you're going through. So yeah, absolutely. And it will end like those yes, tough times. There's a time end, yeah. And then you can move on and you can, you know, both of us have found, you know, second marriages that are, mm-hmm. you know, the right thing. And, and I think, I think that's, that's the, that's the thing to, to know is, and, and maybe you don't find a marriage, maybe you find a, a business or a passion or a hobby or a something else. Yeah, sure. Yeah. It just, it takes time and maybe in the moment it feels really, really shitty, but it, it'll turn out for the better if you just trust that, you know, people are like, oh, trust your gut, eh, woo ha ha. But I don't, I'm telling you, if you, you just got to dial in to your, as, especially as women, we are so much more powerful and have so much like just magic in us. And a lot of the time we forget that we have a lot more power and, um, you know, we're, we're stronger than we think we are. So sure. in this, I feel like, you know, we're on the precipice of, of, um, of that being realized more so. Um, I think, you know, when I was a teacher, um, this is a tangent, but when I was a teacher, I saw, you know, the next generation really picking up on that and kind of like, you know, no Fs given. I'm going to do what I want to do and it doesn't matter because I am happy. So I'm hopeful that it's getting better and better every every generation. <laughs> Well, hopefully, yeah, we, yeah, that would not be wonderful. Yeah, I guess, I guess, once we sort of say, okay, so my goal is I have to be happy, mm. then it can bring up some mental health issues around what happens if I'm not happy. Mm. You know, there's an expectation that I need to be happy. Mm. I'm not. I can't get out of bed today, or you know, I, I feel completely overwhelmed with the things I'm doing, and I'm going through life with a mask. And that can be, be pretty overwhelming anyway, to have that expectation of mm. we have to be happy. Like, yeah. That's not how it works. Right. We're not always happy. Yeah. I think it, it's it's along those lines of like keeping up with the Joneses and making people think like, I don't know. I, I just, we need to, there needs to be more um, realness. And I think I'm, I try to present that to people, especially on my, my social media, like you don't always have the best day and we are all humans and we have emotions and we have mishaps and we make mistakes and life is just a, everyone's kind of fumbling through it and just like hoping for the best. Like there's no perfect person. There's no perfect situation. And we all have our our shit going on. And so, yeah, I think it's okay to – like, that's what I teach people too. Like, if you're just having a crummy day, just give yourself the space to have a crummy day. You know, it's okay. It's – when you fight those feelings, that's when it gets worse. Having to push through a situation and pretend you're happy – I did that for a really long time – is horrible. Especially as a teacher, I mean, you had to pretend like everything's fine. And, you know, in the back of my head, I'm like, my marriage is crumbling. I have to move out of the house. You know, it's just like there's so many things that I had to just mask. And I really think people shouldn't shouldn't have to do that. There's that's that's such a crappy way to live. So, you know, it's OK to be unhappy. Yeah, it is. And it's it, it comes back to those labels that we're supposed to have of, you know, sure. we're supposed to have this job, we're supposed to have, have this 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 marriage or whatever it is, mm. or this, you know, business or this success within the business or we're supposed right. to is the problem. So I love that you describe yourself as a recovering perfectionist. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, in so many, because I was a, I think I, I did a lot of kind of um, inner, inner, I don't know if it's like inner child work or just kind of looking back and kind of investigating why I have these mindset shifts or just narratives that I tell myself, um, which is what I do a lot with my clients, kind of thinking back to the root of what was what's causing that thought. I was a gymnast for 12 years and there was like that elusive perfect 10 that we always had to chase. And so, yeah, so that and I was like a very like 
on my way elite level. Like I was in it, I mean, 40 hours a week. And so I really had this mentality of like, I have to be perfect. And I'm chasing this. I mean, no one gets a perfect 10, not even some Simone Biles. And she, which she is amazing, thankful. I'm so happy and so proud that she was, she came out and, you know, talked about her mental health um, issues and what was going on in during the Olympics. But anyways, so yeah, it, it was something that was ingrained in my brain since I was three. So if I can overcome being a perfectionist or a high achiever and live a life of just like not chasing that elusive perfectionism, other people can too. Because I think when you're an athlete and you have to have that perfectness around your life, it's it's really draining. And so there's a lot of mindset work that goes into it, but it's, it's achievable. <laughs> it is achievable. And that's why it's so great that there are you know, coaches like yourself that, that really help people to be able to get through those times and to get to the bottom of those beliefs. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I mean, because we can all see, so say, you know, gymnastics is a great example, right? The, the perfect 10 isn't designed by that gymnast. That's mm -hmm. designed by some other body, right? We can all see that, right? Mm -hmm. So, so whatever is defining the 10. Um, and yet in life, we don't see that, those standards have been designed by someone else. Yeah. Well, and it's subjective too. I mean, really? one coach's, uh, you know, rating of your skill is completely different than another. Just like somebody else's interpretation of what your life is, is completely different than yours or the person next to you. It's all about perception. And really internally, if you feel like you're doing a good job, that's all that matters. It doesn't matter what anyone else around you thinks. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So you do uh one to one coaching or how yeah. does your yeah. So it's Yeah. So so it's it's a combination of both. Right now it's a group program that I do. Um it's a year long group program because this stuff takes takes time and takes work. And I think that's the other thing too is is people hit roadblocks of not necessarily. I have a lot of people who I talk with and they're like, oh, uh, maybe when this happens, maybe when I'm like, no, you got to do it now because the reason you're coming up like the, with that resistance is because of what your limiting beliefs, you know? And so it is a, is it a year long commitment, a group program um, combined with some one-on-one -on -one coaching. But I, one of the things I love about um, the program and is the community. Anytime I've done a group program, the amount of just like community and people that I've met is so powerful and amazing. And so I wanted to create that is, is a community aspect. And so, um, you know, I just, I think it gives people to that, that idea that you're not alone. Exactly. Exactly. So, yeah. And, and, and you're not alone and you're also not, you know, everybody's different and you yeah. gain tolerance from being in a group that way. Yeah. 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 And it shows you too, like I was saying that there's so many people out there that are going through maybe what you're going through. And so having a community shows you that and gives you, gives you a support system when you're feeling like, you know, cause as an entrepreneur, your, your friend and family maybe aren't necessarily experiencing the same things you're experiencing, not because they don't sympathize or empathize, but they're just not necessarily going through it's a very unique journey as an entrepreneur, as I'm sure you know. And so you have different limiting beliefs that come up and um, challenges. And so it's different than in the corporate world or, you know, kind of nine to five jobs. So it's important to have a community of like minded people. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, even even within a corporate um world, because I've spent most of my working life in the corporate environments and, and going into a lot of businesses. And that's globally. So it's not, it's a universal truth that, you know, people are at work for different reasons. And right. people are looking for different things to come out of their day job. And, you know, whether that's some sort of career, or whether that's, you know, so, some sort of personal development road, or whether that's, um, you know, just, I'm just here because these hours suit my family and that's where I'm putting my priorities. You know, it's very different for different people. 
And it always makes me laugh what in, in a business managers will say, you know, I need to motivate my team. It's like, well, do you even know what motivation is and what yeah. they're motivated by? Yeah. And nine times out of ten, the answer is no, I don't. I don't know. But I but but tell me how to motivate my team. I'm like, I don't know. Did you ask them? Because that's the yeah. non-scientific, really easy answer. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's an interesting situation with i think too like in the corporate world at least i mean i was a teacher that but it's sort of corporate but there's such a disconnect between the higher ups and the people who are actually running the show and so i think that's an important thing to be able to do is like go in and be like yeah what actually motivates people because there's you know people like you said people go to work and do make and make different decisions for so many different reasons and it's important for people to understand that yeah, for sure. For sure. Okay. Let's talk about, um, let's, let's talk about, so we've talked about kind of, you know, personal life and we talked a little bit about work life. Let's yeah. talk about stage life. So for most people, yeah. stage life is being online, um, whether that's being on zoom in your day job yeah. or whether that's, um, you know, be, being on social media or, or running a business online, you know that, that that I consider those things stage life. That's where I you love know. that description. Stage yeah. life. Yeah. Well, you know, because when I talk about stage life and confidence through cabaret, everybody just assumes that means going on a live stage, and it can. You know, it, yeah. it might do. Yeah. So if you were going on a live stage in cabaret, Ooh. okay. <laughs> so cabaret is really like it, I define it as you know being in a small venue. So every every comedian, unless they were born with contacts started in a in a small venue they didn't start in the in the big big stages sure. um you know and, and a lot of singers you know talk about working in little clubs and and working their way up from there and so on so it could be singing it could be comedy it could be um uh, uh dancing it could be drag it could be burlesque it could be yeah. any number of things what would your uh, what would you want to be doing if you were on an actual stage with an audience Oh, wow. That's a great question. So I, <laughs> my, when I was a kid, if people ask you like, what do you want to be when you were up? It was always an actress. I loved acting. My sister went to school for theater. So she kind of followed that passion and I took the science route, but we did acting when we were young. We, because we grew up in San Diego, so we'd go up to LA. And so, um, I, I would love to, be back in theater. Um, it's just so much fun, like just being a different persona. And I think in a way, being an online business owner, I mean, I'm very authentic, but it's also a different, you know, you, there's a different stage presence, you know, when you're um, online and you're, you're doing reels or TikTok. I mean, you can be a different person in a way, um, but I'm very animated and very, you know, enthusiastic. And so I, I, I would love to go back into to theater or even like my husband love, he, he's the funniest person I know. And so I think both of us would, if we could do some sort of comedy in a way, but I don't know. I'm not very, I'm, I'm more like improv. He's probably more like he could, he could do like whole bit. I'm more like, I would do like improv, but um, yeah, that's probably, I guess those two. <laughs> that's interesting. That's interesting. Cause I, 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 comedy for me is, it would on a stage would be terrifying. Yeah. I, well, I mean, just because I say I want to do it, doesn't necessarily mean that I would actually do it. Cause yeah, it is really, I mean, just the whole nuances of all the little things you have to do, but yeah, I would say definitely theater and then comedy, but. Okay. So I asked that question because when we're on a live stage in front of an audience, we yeah. are very vulnerable. Oh, yeah. Sure. And it exposes that. And it exposes, you know, what we're choosing to share of ourselves um, in a similar way with, with online. But when you're, when you're using video and when you're, you know, posting things, it's a little bit more curated. You know, it's, it's a little, a little you, can, you can have some choice. Um, but but it really does expose you to think about, and a lot of people think, oh no, I couldn't do stage like live. But the reality is, the audience is is very often, and I'm going to say pretty much always there to support you. They want you to do well. Yeah, and, and that's true of any kind of stage life, right? So what? So if you were taking one prop on stage with you, mm. and you could take anything, 
what would you take with you? Oh, man. Like some people have chosen like a pen or a mug. I mean, it doesn't have I to honestly, be a big, yeah, you know, right. or prop. I honestly, the first thing that comes to my brain is a chair. <sighs> you can do so much with a chair. You can sit, you can put your leg up on it. You can like move it around. You could turn it into so many. I would, yeah, totally like a, just a good old, like just a solid chair. Something yeah. I could move around. Yeah, a chair for sure. I love chair dancing. I love, love, love chair dancing. And considering that I'm a paid dancer, I ha I have terrible rhythm, like genuinely, like I like, and I can't follow choreography. I can't remember it. Um, so with a chair, you can pretty much do anything. And if it goes wrong, well, you just style it out. That's, yeah. that's fabulous. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Okay. And what would your stage name be, Kate? Oh, woo. So my, my real name is Caitlin. So I kind of feel like Kate is a little bit of a stage name um, because my personal life, people call me Caitlin and my like work life, people call me Kate. So I almost feel like Kate is my, my, you know, it, it, all those actors who like change their names. That's, I think I would, if I was in that, that um, position, I would go by Kate. <laughs> so, and would you be like Kate? Like one, one. Oh, one. oh, like Madonna? No, I, I, <laughs> Madonna, no, hey, Prince. Hey. no, I would, I would, I would, it would definitely just be Kate Benner. Okay. I, I, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, cool. Yeah. Okay, cool. And, and, and that's, and you, you've, you've explained why, but what makes you use Kate online? Cause I use a different name for, for stage. Um, and most people know me as Helen, but, um, but Heather is my, is my name. Yeah. Um, and what makes you use Kate online? Hmm. The simple reason is cause it's easier to spell. That was in the initial <laughs> cause Caitlin, there's so many different ways. And, um, I I guess so that was the initial reason and now it's really because it's I like to keep those two worlds separate I guess in a way and I mean I do bring a lot of my personal life into my social media because I think that's how people connect with you is they see you as a real person but it still gives me a, a way to like separate emotionally because um you know, you you need time to decompress and and separate energetically from your your job and and transition into being you know part of your your life in the in the physical world. Um, so I like to keep the I, it it again started out as being like, well, Kate is easier to spell, <laughs> um, and now it's become more t towards like I can separate in a way. Yeah. Um, when I need to, because it can be emotionally draining at times. And so being able to shift from Kate, which is, you know, that online person who's helping people to Caitlin, who's, you know, has different roles as, you know, a wife and a sister and a daughter and all that kind of stuff, you know, is, is nice to be able to, to separate those two. It is. It yeah. is. And they're all still, I get asked this question all the time about, is it really authentic that you have, um, you know, different, different names for different contexts. And it is all still us. Right. Right. It's yeah. It's, it's bad. That's yeah. That's exactly what it is. I think that it's necessary because if you, I mean, I was in a position when I was a teacher, everything was blended. I mean, work never stopped. And so I've had to really build those boundaries and it's a nice, it's like, I don't know. It's just like a very like hard line of, of like, my name is, is Caitlin in this world and my name's Kate in that world. But you can, I mean, it's fluid. You can blend it too. You know, I have, I have, um, clients who are, are in person that I've met one on, you know, face to face just through, um, different channels and like the physical world, but also online. And so you can, it can fluidly blend together, but when you need it to be a boundary, it's a boundary. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, cause I, I do a lot of work with imposter stuff and I, I always encourage yeah. people to, to find different voices. And if it's a different persona, then, then feed into that and, and yeah. 
use that that energy. And so, you know, when I, when I feel like I can't do something, like I feel like I'm physically weak to do something, then I go, okay, no, I got, I, I, I got this. And then, and then I talk to myself with a really different, very fierce, very capable voice. Mm. It's not weak. It's not like, oh, I can do this. It's like, no, I, no, I can do this. Like, mm -hmm. this, it's a really different part of me, but it's still yeah. authentically me. Right. They're all different parts of you. It's just different things that come out at different times. Yeah. Yeah. So what's your favorite lesson? You've made it through mm. all of these life changes. And what's your favorite lesson that you've learned? Oh, my little thing. So I'm in my, my podcast, I always end with my life. I, I call it my life mantra of progress over perfection and understanding. Yeah, I know. It's like, ooh, understanding that life is just a work of of progress like you're just always there's no perfect end point there's no pot of gold it's all about moving forward even if it's like small baby steps it's all about like a progression you know you're always learning you're always adapting and there's never going to be this perfect like pinnacle moment like you know, I think too, with entrepreneurship, you feel like there's at one point I made it. Well, there's so many different, I made it is different for everyone. Um, having it all is different for everyone, but there really is no, I made it moment. I mean, once you hit that moment, then there's going to be a next moment. So sitting with that progress and knowing that that is like, happening all around you is kind of how I, that's the biggest lesson. Just going with the flow and progress over perfection. <laughs> I love that. I love that. We, we talk about in confidence recovery, we talk about perfectly imperfect a lot. Yes. Yes. Like and I am the role model of that. Action. Yeah. I, I just kind of go, okay, it's not perfect, but that's where we are. Um, and in fact, we, I, case in point, when I recorded for your podcast, yeah, coming out later, that was awesome. I was, I was very unexpectedly last minute thrown into working in a museum and we recorded there. Yeah. And it was fine. I mean, but that's, that's, you know, I've had podcast interviews where people are like, my kid needs to sit with me. My dog's barking in the background. That's all a part of being authentic and being, you know, showing that, that side of just life. Like it's not perfect. There's nothing. Oops, just hit my phone. See, not perfect. But nothing bad happens. Right. And my inner gremlin, that inner critic, I, I talk, I I think in the wide world that people refer to it as the inner critic, but in, in my life, I, I, re, I refer to it as the gremlin would like freak out like, oh my God, you just hit your phone and now it's going to be in the podcast and that's like so embarrassing. But who cares? You know, like there's, there's that dialogue in your brain all the time of like, oh, I didn't do it correctly. Well, who, who cares? I mean, yeah. really nobody does probably you're your worst critic. Yeah. And there is no perfect 10. No, there's not. <laughs> and the dog's I, barking in the background. Say, when I asked you the question about, you know, what, what would you be performing in cabaret? I thought you would be doing something uh some sort of floor work or i'm sort of picturing you doing gymnastics on oh, the gym yeah. well i love yeah. dancing i i was when we were younger we did all sorts of dance ballet jazz tap and you know there's choreography with gymnastics too and now mm -hmm. I, i'm a part-time fitness coach um I love it. It's so much fun. It's a group fitness program and I get to play my own music and I coach through people through stuff. And it's like, I get to dance and, and, you know, work out with people. And so, yeah, I love that kind of stuff. I honestly, if, if someone said I'm doing a cabaret show or I'm doing a dance show, do you want in? I'd be like, yeah, let's do it. Like, <laughs> oh my goodness. I know you need to go find one. I know. I know. I need to go. Yeah. I miss dancing. It's, you know, it's a form of release. So it really is. And it, it, it not only releases what you find when you, when you've done it for a little while is that it really puts you in touch with a lot of parts of yourself that you didn't know or couldn't reach. Mm. It's, mm. it's just such a great way of, you know, and that's, and that's whether you do that in your living room with some music on 
or whether you do that on a live stage with an audience. Yeah. Yeah. You, you know, I, I would say just put some music on and, and, and play. Oh this yeah. That's, that's the that's first thing I wanted to do with Confidence Your Cabaret was, okay, so let's do some workshops. Like let's, yeah. let's play, you know, and well, share was actually the first one that I did. Oh, I love that. Well, like just yesterday, my husband was having a, you know, he was like, uh, having a meh day. And so I put on this like silly song and we danced and sang to it. And like, just the, the, you know, just the movement is that such a release and how can you not be happy when you're dancing and laughing? I mean, dance is great. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So where can people find you? Yeah. Awesome. So I'm on Instagram and TikTok at Kate underscore Benner underscore. Um, and then also just on Facebook, just Kate Benner. Um, and yeah, I have my website too, which has got, uh, it's a labor of love. I designed it myself and I love it. So um, it's www.katebenner.com. So honestly, just type in Kate Benner on any of those and you'll find me. <laughs> Amazing. And that's Benner, B-E-N-N-E-R. So two yes. Ends. Two ends. Yes. Yeah. I think if I had a super, so that's my, my last name. I didn't take my husband's last name, but his last name is Berg, which is a little easier to spell. So when you said stage name, that's the only thing I'd maybe, maybe change because it's like really easy, B-E-R-G, but Stuck with Benner. I like it. Yeah, I like Benner's being my awesome. own person. <laughs> I'm with you there. I'm fully with you there. Yeah. 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 So go, go check out Kate's work. Go check out the website. Um, uh, hit her up on all the social media. Yes. All Come on places. down. Let's fight the gremlin. <laughs> I love that. Um, check out Confidence Your Cabaret, all the socials. Uh, if you if you Google Confidence Your Cabaret, there's like two pages where the stuff. There's Love like it. all the places. The only um, uh, socials that are not Confidence Your Cabaret is Twitter, which is at YBYWYS. Uh, and I am on Clubhouse at Heather YBYWYS. And that stands for it is your body. It is your world and it is your stage and you get to take up space and own it. I love that. Ah. You, you get to choose, you get to create your world. So yeah. enjoy it. Yay. Thank you so much for being here, Kate. It Thank you for having me. Fun. I know. I love it. This is so much fun. Thank you. So, so much fun. So much fun. And uh, for everyone else, uh, we are uh, running new podcasts every Wednesday. Um, and I, I'm just, I can't wait to put this podcast up, actually. I, I'm just so oh. excited. I, I really believe everything comes back to mindset and beating those gremlins. Mm. Yep. Yep. That inner critic. It Once you conquer, conquer that and you figure out how to adjust that and overcome it, I mean, it, it, it'll never go away, but there are ways that you can adjust and you can push it aside and go, go forward and conquer whatever you want to conquer. So, you know, it's, you can do it. <laughs> Beautiful. That's a wonderful place to end. Thank you for that. Love it. <laughs> Thanks everyone. Bye. Bye. <laughs>